Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be painting up Azrael, the new Primaris Azrael from the Wrath of the Soul Forge King box set. Yeah, good luck with my pile of shame, it has just grown. So we assemble up to the point where it gets in the way of painting, the body's fully assembled, arms are separate, shoulder pads are separate, backpack is attached to the banner but separate, uh, the Watcher in the Dark is separate from his whatever he's holding which will be the helmet, Azrael's head is separate. And, uh, yeah, and so I primed the hole with a car primer that's good on plastic. Car primer is good in any season, so there's no trouble of it being too humid or stuff. And then these are all the paints and stuff I used for the project. Alright, on to the banner. We're not going to do pre-coating. There's no point in doing it for this model, really. So with Carrick Stone, e and in Yellow, Ishtabi Bone, and Screaming Skull, and uh, some Lamy Medium just in case, uh, we're going to uh, do the all the robes. So we're going to use an airbrush mostly for this. So first we're going to start off with Carrick Stone as a base layer. This is the dark layer. And uh, then I'm going to apply Eandin Yellow onto it with a little bit of Alamian Medium mixed in so that it f flows better off the brush and is more uh, consistent color. And then I apply it all over the robes. This creates an orange effect and some shadowy stuff. And so I go straight with a airbrush I then with very low air pressure and very slowly I then apply Ustabi bone screaming skull onto it uh, slowly overall to apply these colors on and and yeah and then and then I go to pure screaming skull with uh, water down and I paint thin lines on the edges and folds and the most raised folds and edges to create this, some little line of folk Now, with Gene Sealer Purple, Magos Purple, I don't use the Emperor's Children, but I later bring in uh, Gilliman Flesh. So there is this purple robe that he has in the middle, and I'm going to try to paint it. Unfortunately, I don't have that many purples, so I'm trying to make do with what I have. So I start with the Gene Sealer Purple, then layer it with pure Magos Purple. There's no point diluting it because it's already very thin. Uh, make sure it doesn't pull too heavily in the recesses because we're going to do this a few times. And so basically what I do is I highlight with Gene Sealer Purple. Magos Purple, highlight again, Magos Purple, less and less highlights with Gene Sealer Purple eventually only focusing on the most raised areas. Then I take M uh, Gulliman Flesh which reddens it and adds more of a violet to the color because I don't really have that many purples. And then I make do with some other highlights with Gene Sealer Purple. And uh, that's how I do the center. Alright, with Caliban Green, Lauren Forest, and Auric Flesh, I'm going to paint his armor. So first I layer everything with Dark Angel, or Caliban Green, which uh, is a little odd because his armor, which has a little bit of paint from the airbrushing, the color is brighter, but with the parts that are still using the primer, uh, it takes a few coats to get it solid, and even then it's still noticeably different. So, oops. Then uh, I do Caliban Green and Lauren Forest, sort of one-to-one, -one, and then I basically cover 90% of all the Caliban Green. And uh, then I do pure Lauren Forest on 90% of the previous step or so, eh, maybe 75% of the previous step. And then finally I do like a one-to-one-ish of Lauren Forest and Auric Flesh and then do like thin highlights along the uh, edges of their armor and stuff. And that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. However, towards the end I notice that the colors don't match too well, they don't flow right and they're not bright enough. Uh, they, they seem a little too, too, too disjointed, so I try to unify them.
So one way to unify a bunch of colors that just seem very off is to apply a wash. So I take orc flesh and lamian medium, dilute orc flesh heavily with lamian medium because it's very strong, and then I just apply this all the green, and this sort of changes all the different colors to make them look kind of similar, like a natural progression of dark to light, because sometimes some colors are just a bit off from each other. Now with Lore and Force and Auric Flesh, we're going to do the final highlights of the armor. So we're going to do a one-to-one -one with Lore and Force and Auric Flesh, and then just sort of redo all the highlights and lines. And then once that is done, we're going to take pure Auric Flesh, and we're going to apply it very thinly on some of the more raised areas, corners, and stuff like that. And his fingers and stuff. Just very little of it. Make sure it's watered down a bit so it's a little translucent. Alright, with Blood Angels Red, Lamian Medium, Evil Sun Scarlet, Wild Rider Red, and Troll Slayer Orange, we're going to do these red wings on his helmet, and uh, a couple of the little swords he has uh, that are on his armor. So basically, I accidentally forgot to film a step, but basically, so we first start off with Evil Sun Scarlet, and apply it all over the uh, parts that are going to be red. Then we highlight pretty much 90 to 95% of everything with Wild Rider Red. And the part I skipped was the Blood Angels contrast. I basically took it, mixed it with Lamian Medium, and thinned it down, and like I just did it so fast I forgot to record it. Basically we apply it all over and add shade. Then we re-highlight everything, like 90 to 95%, or maybe 90 to 80%, with Wild Rider Red. And then we do a little bit of Troll Slayer Orange on the tips of the helmet, the most raised areas, uh, stuff like that, or the tops of each of those little wings that are in there, in the helmet and stuff like that. And then finally, uh, his little sword guys, so he has these scattered around, so basically what I do is, because for things that are so small, high contrast is good, but they're so tiny it's really hard to paint the detail, so what I do is I paint the highlight first by painting the whole thing in Troll Slayer Orange, then I take the darkest color, and then that's much easier, and I paint the center of the sword and like, uh, parts of the guard of the sword with the deep red, and so that allows it to show up at a distance. Alright, with Dawnstone, Ulthuan Grey, and I did not use Grace here in the end. So we're going to paint all the grey wings, statues, emblems, and all that stuff. So basically paint everything Dawnstone. And then, with a very fine brush, and with Ulthuan Grey, we're going to paint everything. And this takes a while. This model, uh, I'm surprised how long it took me to paint him, but it's mostly he has so many of these little filigree designs and things to paint that it takes a while to cautiously and carefully do this right. This is actually a high skill thing to paint all these little wings without screwing it up and sometimes you have to paint them two or three times to make sure the color fills in the little wing in detail. Alright, with Doom Bull Brown, Nuln Oil and uh, I don't show it, but I bring it in a Karak Stone. I paint the handle of his sword. So I start off with a layer of Doombull Brown. Then I fill it in with Nuln Oil. Then I re-highlight everything carefully with Doombull Brown. But uh, that didn't seem to look good. So then I refill it with some Nuln Oil, and then I took uh, sort of a mix of Doombull Brown and a little bit of Karak Stone to make it whiter, but not too white, still within like sort of the brownish, and then re-highlight all the rings. And then maybe fill in a little bit of more Nuln Oil in there to uh, fix up any mess, because I it's hard to paint perfectly straight lines repeatedly. And with Corvus Black, Dawnstone, and Nuln Oil, I don't show it here, but I use Nuln Oil to fix it. So basically, he has one of his, like, in-between armor things visible, only one. 
So I fill it with Corvus Black, then I highlight with Dawnstone, but I screwed that up. So I redid it with Corvus Black, re-highlighted it with Dawnstone better, and then filled it with Nuln Oil to fix any little mess of the lines. Alright, with Thondia Brown and Gorthor Brown, we're going to paint the leather that they have. The Watcher in the Dark also has one too. So basically, his pouches and uh, gun holster, we're going to paint with Thondia Brown. Then we're going to take Gorthor Brown and we're just going to lightly apply it on all the edges and a few lines within. Now, one, uh, it's a little bit too strong compared to the Thondia Brown, so what I do is I just apply line and I touch it with my finger and this sort of blends it in and it looks fine. Alright then, with Seraph Sepia, Kislev Flesh, Palliwood Flesh, we're going to paint his face. So we're going to start with a layer of Kislev Flesh all over his face. Then we're going to wash it in with Seraph Sepia. We don't want it to uh, to overpower it, we just want a thin wash over it to color change it, and very little in the recesses, we don't want it to go there. Then, we're going to re-highlight pretty much 90% of it with Kislev Flesh. Uh, yeah. Then we're going to apply another layer of Seraph Sepia. Then we're going to carefully highlight his face again. We're going to start with like the straight line. Start with that, like the edges of his front part of the skull, his eyebrows, his high cheekbones, his nose, his jawline, his chin, the edges of his jaw, front and back, and stuff like that. And then fill it in a little. And then finally we're going to take a little bit of Pallid Witch Flesh and mix it in with Kislev. No more than one to one. And then we're going to highlight the edges of his skull, his eyebrows, high cheekbones, nose, stuff like that. The important like angular stuff that's easy to paint. Alright, with Corvus Black and Dawnstone, we're going to do his hair. So Corvus Black, all over. Simple. Then I'm going to mix a little bit of Dawnstone into the Corvus Black, and then just paint straight lines along the edges of his hair and within. And then with a, more of a mix of Dawnstone, not pure Dawnstone, I apply little dots here and there along uh, bits of his hair on the front, and very thin parts of his lines and stuff like there, like his parting of his hair and stuff. And yeah, and that's pretty it. And also surprisingly, he has hair. A hairdo, even. Now with Corvus Black, Dawnstone, and I don't show it, well I'll show it later, but uh, Black Templar Contrast Paint, we're going to paint his banner. So we're going to take a bit of Corvus Black mixed with Dawnstone, sort of one to one-ish, and then paint all the edges of the banner. The problem is these are a little too strong. I then re-highlight further with pure Dawnstone in the most raised areas and stuff, but it's too, too bright, too much of a contrast. So I take uh, Black Templar Contrast, water it down a bit, because it's very strong, and then I apply it all over. And it sort of smooths out the randomness and keeps the colors within each other and fixes my lines. And uh, then you'll notice a picture at the end where the whole thing is done. So here's the thing. This banner is so tiny and small, I have to paint it like really close to my face and I can't uh, record it. Which, uh, it's basically the same color scheme as everything else. The green is the same as his armor. The white is the same as his uh, white filigrees. The orange is the same as you know, the little swords that the guys carry. So everything that's on there has already been done just in a different part of the armor and stuff, but I just couldn't film it. Uh, only things that noteworthy is the lines of red that encompass the surrounding area was painted with the bright orange first and then filled in with a deep red. It's very barely noticeable, except on the points, because they're thicker. Uh, yeah, but apart from that, uh, it's pretty much the same as everything else. Oh, and the bones on the hands are painted with Karak stone, 
uh, just like everything else and highlight it with something a little thinner and that's pretty much it uh, so sorry if you couldn't see it but like I couldn't record it All right, with Gene Sealer Purple, Screaming Skull, and Golem in Flesh, we're going to paint his Purity Seals. His Purity Seals are actually a different color, sort of a purplish, which I don't really have. So I'm going to try to get as close as I can to it. So I basically paint with Gene Sealer Purple, then fill them with Golem in Flesh. Then once they dry, highlight everything with Gene Sealer Purple. Then refill them with Golem in Flesh, making it a bit reddish. Then I take a pure Gene Sealer Purple mixed with a little bit of Screaming Skull, and I do dot highlights all on the edges of the circles and within the skull. Alright, with Dawnstone, Ulthorn Grey, and Thunderhawk Blue, we're going to do the paper of his purity seals. They're actually different than what I've ever done before, according to the box art. So we're going to paint the whole thing Dawnstone. Then we're going to take a one-to-one -one of Dawnstone and Ulthorn Grey, and we're going to paint the edges of all the uh, uh, paper, the folds, the centerpieces, and we're going to paint like 90% of it in total. Just only some deep folds where the light might ca not catch is there going to still be some Dawnstone. In some places that'll be a little jarring, but it'll be fine. And then we take pure old one gray and we paint only the edges of the paper and the folds. And then once that's done, we take Thunderhawk Blue, and I thin it down enough so that it flows well, and a thin brush, and we do a bunch of lines and tap tap taps to create the look of writing. And this actually covers up and blends in very well any uh, issues you might have with painting right straight lines or stuff like that, or the color transitions. Alright, just a small thing, but with Carrick Stone, Ushab T-Bone, and Magos Purple, we're going to paint his little feather that he has on his seal thingy. So basically, we're going to paint the whole thing Carrick Stone. Then, we're going to paint uh, highlights of Ushab T-Bone. There's a thin line in the center, we're going to paint that, and we're going to paint lines along the edges with, you can somewhat see feathers. And then with pure Magos Purple, we're going to just apply a dash of it onto like the bottom center of the uh, feather and along the quill shaft, I think? Yeah. Now with Corvus Black, we're just going to paint these little, well, the inside of his robes. Alright, with Corn Red, Evil Sun, Scarlet, and Troll Slayer Orange, we're going to paint the eye lenses on the helmet. Now, I'm going for high contrast because these things are very small, but I do a base layer of Corn Red first over all the green and stuff in there. Then with Evil Sun, Scarlet, I basically fill out the eye lens. And uh, then with Troll Slayer Orange, I then like paint a dot of it on the middle right of each eye, which, yeah, that's all I can think of. Alright, with Dawnstone, Corvus Black, Thunderhawk Blue, and Old Juan Grey, we're going to try to paint the Power Sword. So first I start off trying to use an airbrush, but uh, my airbrush is done and doesn't seem to work too well. And these colors are a little too similar, and so they don't come out very striking. So I say screw it, and so I go straight into just using a brush. So basically the whole thing is Dawnstone. And so what I do is I do transitions. So I do pure Corvus Black in one section. Then I do one-to-one -one of Corvus and Thunderhawk going down one direction. Then I do a pure Thunderhawk. And then I do one-to-one -one of Thunderhawk and then to Dawnstone. And then I do a pure Dawnstone, and basically I go from that tier, sort of like a descending elevator, and starting at different points. So it's from black, to half black and blue, to blue, to half blue and gray, then to gray, and then gray to black, and then black. And so that's pretty much all it does, going up and down uh, at different points on each four parts of the sword. Then with Ulthorn Gray, I just paint the edges. But, uh... The sword is a little flat, and so it was very hard to paint a thin line in there. And maybe I should have painted the lines first and then filled in with the other colors uh, to thin it out. But, oh well, it's done. Here's something I haven't done in a while uh, write on a model. So basically, I take a uh, mechanical pencil and I write his name, Azrael, on his little nameplate there. And so with uh, 
he it's his letter his name is six letters so basically I divide the nameplate into two halves because equal for six and then I start with in the middle the two letters in the middle and I paint solid straight lines or I, I draw straight lines and that's how I get the easy stuff and then once the lines straight lines are done I then do any kind of curves and then I go to the last letters and first letter so a and L and then I just fill in the middle letter easy ish and then I take a 0.25 millimeter micro pen and I just paint it in and it flows in very well and it looks pretty good and with AK interactive ultra matte varnish we apply it all over the model which is very important because there are some parts that just have a lot of shine on them and I have to apply several layers especially on the banner uh, orc flesh mixed with lamine medium is really shiny like a mirror finish sort of so this helps tone it down Alright, I forgot his right shoulder pad has nothing on it, so I'm going to apply a decal. So with Microset, which is pretty good for applying decals, I place it on the spot, I then move the decal onto it, then I realize the decal I have is way too small. I then get a slightly bigger decal, and then apply it on there, and then fix it on. However, I ended up screwing it up, because... I uh, didn't wait for it to dry enough, I didn't apply enough Microset after the fact, and so that when I sealed it in with AK Interactive, uh, it looks actually like paper. Alright, with Vallejo, Vallejo Metal Colors, we're going to do Exhaust Manifold and Duraluminum, which is basically a dark metal and a silver. Well, not that dark of a metal. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint everything with exhaust manifold, the dark metal. All the metal pieces, uh, stuff like that, here and there, all with this. And then we're going to take the Duraluminum and uh, we're just going to paint thin lines on the most raised areas of like the power cables that are up near his head. And uh, the squares of his shoulder pads exhaust things. And as far as the gun, we're just going to paint straight lines along the edges of things and on the squares of things. Yeah. Uh, they're very small, so a high contrast of colors between them makes it noticeable. Alright, with Sarasepia and Exhaust Manifold, I mix them in a little bit together to bronzify, sort of, the metal. And I apply it onto his, uh, like, these metal clasps on his belt and stuff. Because they're not metal, they're a little off, but yeah. Alright, with Fulgrite Copper, Castellex Bronze, Psychorax Bronze, and Seraph Sephia, we're going to paint the metals and stuff. So I'm mostly focusing on the uh, sword handle and guard. So we're going to paint it with Fulgrite Copper first, then we're going to fill in a little, uh, like the skull eyes and stuff like that, and some of the center parts of the wing with Castellex Bronze. Once that was done, we then uh, go and add Seraph Sephia all over, a thin layer of it. We just want to bronze a little bit. Then we're going to take full gray copper, uh, the gold, and we're basically going to re-highlight everything, or you can easily just do some uh, dry brushing or edge highlight, or what was it, over brushing, yeah, to add the shine back and some color. Then go with pure Psychorax bronze and apply it onto all the edges and stuff, highlights and stuff like that. And that is the gold. We then proceed to assembly, and yeah, that's it. We just assemble the whole model, and we apply it to a slightly better brown base.
and done. Alright, so there are a few details I glossed over here and there because it's just like, you know, petty stuff. Uh, for instance, like, I didn't notice this until after recording, but uh, I didn't paint the bullets in his gun uh, magazine. I did that afterwards. Um, as far as it goes, as far as this model, it is an upgrade from the original Azrael. Uh, but it really did show light and hi uh, highlight how many paints I'm really missing, despite having a lot of them. Uh, I have a lot of some colors, <laughs> and I'm missing some different shades and colors of others. So, I probably need to go pick up some new paints for faces and stuff like that. So overall, it's a mix. Uh, in the end, I'm going to give it 7 out of 10 for... There are a few things... There are some things on this model that are great, that I painted well. And there are other things that they're not great but because they everything else is great and they are not great they stick out like a sore thumb and drag everything down so my sword that i painted not too good the power sword it's the colors are too muted are too similar somehow uh, the lines help with the transition uh it makes it harder to notice even though the transitions are a little blocky uh, the decal on his right arm, I don't know how, I use stuff that's supposed to be good for that. Uh, so that messed up. Um, his face is good, but the colors are not the best, but that's like what I got. So maybe I need to update them. Uh, apart from that, so the robes are great. The armor is pretty good. The red, especially his ringed red helmet, is very good as well. His banner is good. Now, I was surprised at his purity seals. Those colors are really interesting, and it worked really well, these white purity seal things. The gray filigree for the wings, the Dark Angel's wings everywhere, those hurt my hand, cramping to paint those, but that turned out pretty well. And the base is actually really good. It's not a detriment to the model. It's just the sword, mostly. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so... But I would say 7 out of 10, if the sword wasn't a factor and the shoulder pad wasn't a factor, I would probably say an 8, maybe a 9. Maybe. I don't know, I feel like a few things are off or something. It's just like, something's off for me. But yeah, so, moving on. So, sorry to the pile of shame, but uh, not uh, one step forward, uh, five or six steps back. I don't know how many are in the Wrath of the Soul Forge King box set, but... Moving on, so I'm moving on to Vashtor next, and so like the video if you like the video, comment if you want to comment, share if you want to share it, and I'll be back when I'm back. Bye.